The tundra is located up in the very northern latitudes. So you can see there's a very northern band of tundras located up in northern North America, Greenland, parts of northern Europe, and also Asia. That's where tundras can be found. So they have very cold temperatures. They can range from negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit up until about a mild 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Even though they may have a bunch of snow and ice, however, when we're looking at precipitation, they're actually dry as a desert. They don't really get much rainfall, on average six to 10 inches of rain. So here's a climatograph for a typical tundra climate looking at Alaska. So again, um, on this y-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. Then we have precipitation levels in uh, millimeters and then months on the y-axis, oh, sorry, on the x-axis. Here we have temperature trends, you know, where it starts to increase during summer months, but then gets really cold during winter months. And then these blue bars here represent the precipitation levels. You can see it's pretty dry. They don't really get very much rain. So if you're looking at this climatograph and you're asked to figure out what climate it belongs to, again, look at the temperatures, where does it range, and then how much precipitation do they have? Because it's such a cold and frozen environment, there are different adaptations that plants may have to survive in this type of environment. It is really cold, so a good chunk of the ground is actually frozen. That's called permafrost. Permafrost is any ground that remains completely frozen at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius or colder for at least two years straight. And so this could be like right at the surface or this permafrost can be kind of deeper in the ground. So not many things can get very big. Can't really have very deep roots if it's a frozen ground. We have lichens, really small shrubs, moss, which grows on rocks and other things, dwarf trees, which are little tiny shrub-like trees. Because of the permafrost, these plants will have typically shorter roots. They are well adapted for those cold temperatures and are smaller in size. So here you can see what a permafrost layer may, may look like. This may be just the active layer of soil that plant roots can actually penetrate. But anything down here below is all frozen. You have a huge ice wedge and all this ground here might be frozen, can't penetrate any kind of roots through there. Here images of different kinds of plants that you may see growing in the tundra. Here is some moss and lichen growing on this rock right here. This is a small dwarf tree, small wildflowers. And we have animals that are also adapted to live in this kind of environment. So we have caribou, polar bears, arctic foxes, and even some grizzly bears can get up to these northern latitudes, especially in Alaska. So what can you notice about their coloration? For living in this kind of environment. Perfect, they're really light in colored or even white and that's going to help them camouflage with their environment. If there are really no trees and stuff and it's kind of flat, there are really no places for prey to maybe blend in and hide from potential predators and vice versa, so they camouflage with the environment. To survive that really cold weather, they may have really thick fur, maybe a fat layer underneath that. They may migrate during those winter cold months when food is sp um, sparse, gets too cold for them. And they also may hibernate as well and kind of just fatten up for those winter periods, sleep it away and come out during spring. That's tundras.